It's the election now heading to the must-win state of Florida. That's right. The Republican nominee urging early Clinton voters to recast their ballots in the wake of this latest FBI investigation. All right, Fox News national senior national correspondent John Roberts is live <laughs> in Miami with the very latest. Hey, John. It was close. I'm just going to give up, Brian. Yeah. Let's just, just say here's We're almost John. done. I got six more days to get it right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We'll keep trying. Good morning to you, Brian, Steve, Ainsley. And I always feel it's good to be in Florida. Somehow waking up in Miami on the shores of Biscayne Bay is just a wonderful thing. Four, uh, three numbers rather to keep in mind here: 29, four, and four million and ninety-three thousand. Twenty-nine electoral votes up for grabs. This is the big prize of all of the swing states. Donald Trump leads in a new New York Times Siena poll by four points. And 4 million and 93,000 people have already cast early ballots. Today, Donald Trump with a big rally here in downtown Miami at the amphitheater of Bayfront Park that's going to provide him a very big visual in terms of creating enthusiasm to get people out to vote here in the Sunshine State. Yesterday, a big rally in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where Donald Trump uh, urged people who have voted for Hillary Clinton in four states where they allow it to to change their vote on Election Day. Listen to what he said. For any Democratic voter who have already cast their ballots for Hillary Clinton and who are having a bad case of buyer's remorse, Wisconsin is one of several states where you can change your early ballot if you think you've made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, those other states are Michigan, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, by the way. Uh, Donald Trump yesterday continued to highlight uh, Hillary Clinton's lingering problems with the FBI investigation. He'll do that again today, but also going deep into policy yesterday with a speech in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania on Obamacare. Of course, he's promised to repeal and replace it, but upping the ante yesterday, saying that he would make this a big priority and uh, would do that through Congress with a, a very you, interesting uh, way to do it. Listen to what he said. I will ask Congress to convene a special session so we can repeal and replace. And it will be such an honor for me, for you, and for everybody in this country, because Obamacare has to be replaced. That was the first time yesterday that he's talked about this idea of convening a special session of Congress. Early voting here in Florida, we mentioned nearly about 4,100,000 people have voted. So far, Republicans lead in returns by about 15,000. Not to say that people voted along party lines, but that'll give you an indication of how the returns have been coming here. Right, Steve? Right. Ainsley? All right, John, thank, thank you very much. John. And the and interesting thing is, go ahead, Steve. I was going to say the interesting thing about that is usually Democrats lead in early voting. Mm -hmm. Republicans go to the polls the day of the mm -hmm. vote. And the real story also is, and no one's talking about, is the black vote is really down everywhere, especially in North Carolina. It's down in Florida. Mm -hmm. It is down in some key states that could really Nothing burn Nothing compared Hillary to Clinton. what happened when President Obama was running. Of course. That's, yeah, in fact, that's who we're comparing it to. Right. And that's what, that's what Hillary Clinton was counting Right. On. You know, we like to tell you news that you're interested in, obviously. If you go to Google and you see what you guys are searching for, so many of you are searching for change early vote. Look, Look at the at spike in that at the end of October a few days ago. That was after the FBI reopened the investigation on Clinton because many people out there in certain states were voting for Hillary Clinton and they're interested now in changing their votes. We should also point out that Donald Trump did mention yesterday out on the stump, as we just heard from John Roberts, that, you know, there are certain states. And what are they, Ainsley? Where the you can states do it? where you can do it Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, and Mississippi. You had a segment on that yesterday morning, last night. Donald Trump's talking about it. Now people are looking to see if they can change their votes. That's right. We did the segment because people were interested in it. We did. Meanwhile, down in Sanford, Florida yesterday, Hillary Clinton was down there. And you know what? I don't think she likes Donald Trump. And she knows that there are a lot of people in Florida who are going to vote for him, even though she needs their vote. And she made this suggestion yesterday. If you know anybody who's thinking about voting for Trump, well, first of all, stage an intervention. I mean, this. And, you know, if they've ever paid a dollar in income tax, ask them whether they think it's so smart for somebody to lose other people's money, claim a loss, and then not pay income taxes.
Right, and she continues to pretend as if uh, people in big business don't do everything they can to pay as little tax as possible. I think it's an insult to most of the audience. <laughs> also, she, she's talking she about that, something that's legal. Yeah, she says that, and meanwhile, health care costs are skyrocketing. Yeah. Uh, who can afford it? Yes, that's my exact point, is that Donald Trump was actually getting cheers because he was talking about policy yesterday, including Obamacare, when sign-ups began because he was very apropos to what's happening. Hillary Clinton, <laughs> in, in, to a degree, I think that she's getting a little desperate. When you wheel out Alicia Machado, who can spare speak English in Florida to, to plead your case not to vote for the other guy instead of saying this is what I will do as president after the fireworks show when I celebrate this is what I'm gonna do instead she's like oh you're not gonna believe how bad the other guy is well President Obama's out there saying oh by the way if you don't vote for her you just don't like women you're sexist well listen the race has tightened ever since the Comey surprise and you know they're pulling out what they got pulling out look, all the stops yeah look for them but is to that throw the, the right well, stop Machata, to close out an argument was she convicted Maybe that's was she got. a criminal? She was convicted, or was she accused of crimes? She had some rough years. Yeah. Okay, let's just go with that. You're talking about the Very, drug, yeah. She was uh, friends with a drug kingpin. It is alleged. Yeah. Okay. We all have one friend that becomes a drug kingpin. Meanwhile, who exactly was Donna Brazil's friend who fed her the question that she then fed to Hillary Clinton? We know that she did it at least twice, thanks to WikiLeaks. Something about the primary debate? Something like that. So anyway, uh, the Daily Caller. Tried to figure out, okay, who could possibly, which of the women uh, asked the question, and who did they tell that question to beforehand? Well, CNN has been floating this idea that maybe Donna Brazil heard the question from the woman who asked it, and they, they queried two different women Mickey the, Ward and Leanne Walters. The day before at a charity event. And as it turns out, both women say, we never met her. We talked instead to a producer from Anderson Cooper, and we gave that person the question. Danelle Garcia is the producer at CNN that they said they talked to. Mickey Ward, like you were saying, and Leanne Walters, the mm -hmm. two women who stood up and asked um, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders debate questions in well, March. Well, uh, Jeff Zucker says he's horrified. Uh, Jake Tapper says it's, uh, it's uh, terrible. You know, he's, uh, he's, every, everyone's upset that he actually got this, that these questions got out. And you just wonder, were these the only two questions, and is Donna Brazil the only one leaking things to Hillary Clinton? What other events took place? What other questions got out? Remember, Donna Brazil ended that email with more to come. Well, CNN, CNN was confident that uh, she did not receive the questions from anybody at CNN, and yet you, you put the dots together, and it doesn't look as if they got, she got the questions directly from the women. Uh, keep in mind as well, one of the things, thanks to WikiLeaks, is we see the collusion with the media this time that we have never seen before. The New York Times, you've got NBC, you've got MSNBC, you've got CNN, you've got all sorts of media outlets all in bed with the Clinton camp. How about this? One of those WikiLeaks actually talked about the outrage they felt on an SNL skit that depicted George Soros and another one of their big donors on it. I don't even remember the skit. Next thing you know, the SNL takes down all links to that skit. Really? Wait a second. So they're even rigging the comedy shows? Yeah. You know what? Because I have a few skits I'd like them to take down that might not be retrievable. With journalists that are with the mainstream media that are colluding in all of this, they need to learn a lesson from this, that you are going to get caught. And this is a prime example. This yeah. journalist's name is all over the Internet now. So anyway, thought we'd bring you up to date on that. Meanwhile, look at this. All right, six days from now, six days, Steve, you brought up a good point. Next week at this time, we're going to know who has won this election. That's right. We're going to have coverage for you all next week. Fox and Friends, we're going to be live starting at 5 a.m. And we're going to be, someone here at Fox will be live on the air at all times as the polls are opening and the votes come in. So stay with Fox News, America's election headquarters. I don't mean to right. counter Steve, but I remember a Bush Gore. The I know, I thought day, about we that did when not I said know it. Who the president was. I thought about that. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of crazy. We're hoping yeah, that, that a we week have from right results. now, when you tune in, you'll know. Meanwhile, straight ahead on this Wednesday, Donna Brazile feeding debate questions to the Clinton camp is just the tip of the iceberg. We're breaking down the worst examples of media bias, and there are plenty coming up next. And Starbucks trying to break the uh, to bring the country back together with a special unity cup of coffee, but is doing just the opposite online. The revolt going viral straight ahead.
It's a rigged system, folks, and a big part of the rigging is the media. I will tell you right now. It's a big part of the rigging. Donald Trump has called it out his entire campaign, but media bias is reaching a fever pitch because we are just six days out from the big election day. Here to break down the most outrageous violations yet, Kelly Riddell. She is the deputy opinion editor at the Washington Times. Great to see you again, Kelly. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Let's uh, start with some examples of how the mainstream media is spinning this. Let's take, for instance, the investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails, mm -hmm. and now they are blaming this on James Comey. It's an indictment on the FBI. <laughs> Look yes. at this. Mainstream media had 88 negative statements about Comey compared to 31 critical statements of Hillary Clinton in regards to this latest case. And then USA Today, their headline was, Email Case Puts Heat on FBI Chief. What's your reaction? I mean, this is just typical. This is what the Hillary Clinton campaign wanted to do as soon as this news broke, was basically turn this into an indictment on James Comey and not on her and to deflect the attention. And this is what uh, the mainstream media is doing. Um, they also, the Clinton team, also dumped a bunch of oppo research on Donald Trump over the weekend and on Monday about his, presume his ties to Russia and how the FBI is looking into this. You see Harry Reid go on the Senate floor on Monday saying the FBI has explosive information about uh, Trump's ties to Russia. And none of this has really panned out, but that did not stop NBC and CNBC from basically putting out very thinly reported stories about the FBI probing into um, Paul Manafort's ties with Russia and then Slate putting out uh, what is now a debunked story saying that Donald Trump had a private email server that connected directly to a bank in the Kremlin. Hillary Clinton tweeted that out, um, that story out, and it's been largely, largely discredited because it just didn't make any sense by cybersecurity analysts. It's yep. just not true. We showed some of those headlines. The one that got me, Slate said, was a Trump server communicating with Russia. <laughs> I was watching some of the mainstream media this morning while I was getting ready at home, and they were showing video of what people in Russia were doing doing and what they thought about the election. And I thought, do Americans, is that really care? pertinent here? Do we care? Yeah, no, I mean, but that is, that's one of the, that's one of the lines that they want to carry forward. And the New York Times came out yesterday with a story. It was on page 19, by the way, right. that said 21, that the FBI. 21, actually. 21, Kelly. Yeah, tw oh, 21. Yeah. It was on page 21 that the FBI looked into uh, Donald Trump's ties with Russia and they found nothing. Um, but on the front page of the New York Times was a story about Donald right. Trump's dubious taxes, which it turned out that it took five reporters to uncover that Donald Trump did nothing illegal. Okay. With his taxes. Thank you, Kelly. By the way, the reporters <laughs> in Russia were, were interviewing people who were for Trump, so they were trying to say that Russia is tied to Trump. Oh, anyway, goodness. thank you so much, Kelly, for being with us. Coming up, Governor Nikki Haley down in South Carolina, slow to support Donald Trump, but now says she is voting for him. Our next guest says every working American needs to follow her lead because only elites can afford another Clinton White House. Steve Hilton's warning to the working class. We have got some quick Wednesday morning headlines for you right now. He died at the hands of terrorists in Benghazi after Hillary Clinton stalled on sending more security that he requested. And now this is what happens if you try and donate to her campaign on Ambassador Chris Stevens' behalf. It blocks you. But if you donate for Osama bin Laden, the site goes right through. Great. And serving up a cup of controversy, Starbucks' new Unity Cup sparking outrage just days before the election. The new green design features more than 100 people, as you can see right there, drawn with a single line. But some are accusing Starbucks of political brainwashing and spreading liberal bias. Hmm. There you go. <clears throat> Brian. All right, Steve. It's in a huge change of heart. One of Donald Trump's most prominent critics recently revealed why she'll be voting for Donald Trump after all. This is no longer a choice for me on personalities because I'm not a fan of either one. What it is about is policy. The best person based on the policies and dealing with things like Obamacare still is Donald Trump. That doesn't mean it's an easy vote. But it does mean that I'm watching out for the people of South Carolina, and I'm watching out for the people of this country, and that's where I, that's where I, that's who I will be voting for on November 8th. Wow. Our next guest says this is the lesson to every working American, building off what the governor just said. Here to explain is Crowdpack CEO and former advisor to UK Prime Minister David Cameron, Steve Hilton. Steve, you wrote a column about this, building off the Nikki Haley quote. Why? 
because I think that it goes to the heart of the choice that people have to make in the election, which is what are going to be the real world consequences of the outcome for real people. If you look at what the Clinton campaign are doing, basically the whole campaign along, they've just been saying don't vote for Trump because of his personal behavior. You saw even yesterday where she wheels out Miss Universe. There's no from argument. From as well. That's right. There's no argument about his policies, about his tax plan, his support for school choice, any of that stuff. It's just his personal behavior means he can't be president. Now, if you're rich, you can afford to take that view because, to be honest, if you have a President Clinton and the Democrats and more of the same economic stagnation, it doesn't really affect you. Your life is going to be fine. But if you're a working American who's really struggling to pay the bills, you don't find the job opportunities there, you're worried about the future for your kids, you can't afford to have four more years of the same economic stagnation and that's why right. you've got to put the real impact before personal behavior and really look at policy. You're the professional uh, Politico but if I'm a candidate and, and you, you, I hired you to, be, to, to finish off my campaign and my best closing argument is how bad the other guy is, I think I'm a failed candidate. It's, all they're talking about is how thin-skinned he doesn't pay taxes and look at how he, how he, uh, how he views women. It's really embarrassing if you, if you think about the fact that this is a person, Hillary Clinton, who's basically been, been plotting and scheming for this for 30 years. And right a few days before her big moment, she hasn't got a single inspiring message about the change that she will bring to real people's lives. She's just slagging off the other guy. It's really kind of embarrassing. And I think when people think about, well, when I come and vote and I really have to think about the impact of my vote on real life, that is the key, crucial factor. So many people looked at Donald Trump and said, just prove yourself electable. And he kept tripping himself up. For the last two and a half weeks, all he does is talk about policy. He was getting cheers on policy yesterday and barely brought up emails. Fascinating as we look to see the close of this campaign where most national polls have it within two points. It's, it's exactly right, because all along, right from the beginning, when Trump has been talking about the issues and about real change in real people's lives, he does well. And so when you have, like we saw a headline in the New York Times not long ago, which is, how could anyone vote for Trump? Yeah, you write that in your column, how could anyone vote for Trump? And you come back is, is that really your best argument for voting for Clinton? That's right, how could anyone vote for Trump? Because they don't want to, they, they literally can't understand how anyone could support a candidate with those personal characteristics. But that's because they don't want to engage in the real argument about what difference is going to be the result of voting for Trump versus Clinton on the economy, on schools, on health care, where he's got right. the message of change. And all she's saying is basically you're going to end up with more of the same, right. which has left the rich richer, but half of America earning less today than about 15 years ago. Who would think a month ago uh, we'd be talking six days out, we still don't know who's going to win. But that is exactly the case. Steve Hilton, Good great to see, to see you. you. Right, good job. All right, coming up straight ahead, and we have a Fox News alert, and it's not good news. Breaking right now, two cops ambushed, shot dead in their patrol cars, two separate attacks. Brand new details just coming in uh, from an emotional press conference with the chief of police. And World Series ratings are surging for the first time in a long time as NFL ratings are tanking. Many blaming the national anthem protests and a great matchup in baseball. What does the host of Fox NFL Sunday, Mr. Everything, Kurt Menevy, think? We're going to find out. We put a mic on him. I hope he talks. Every four years, America chooses its next leader. And this time, the country makes its most critical decision yet. Nobody can solve problems better than we can. A movement like they've never, ever seen. I want to be the president for everybody. On November 8th. America's comeback begins. And it's all been leading up to this. The world is watching as America chooses its next commander-in-chief. And only one team gets you every angle, all day and all night as the votes roll in. Breaking down every state. Every there and the families of those officers. By the way, we don't know their identities just yet. But we are getting new details about the two police officers who were killed overnight in Iowa. They were murdered while sitting in their squad cars. The suspect still on the run free to kill again. This happened just outside of Des Moines near a high school. In two separate locations, the shootings occurred 20 minutes apart. Fellow officers visibly shaken.
in all appearances, it looks just like that, that these officers were ambushed. It doesn't look like there was any interaction between these officers and, and whoever the coward is that shot them while they sat in their cars. Um, that's the best we got that we can explain the scene right now. Um, both of them were in their cars. Wow, this happened at 1.06 a.m. Central Time. Multiple law enforcement agencies are now involved in a massive manhunt at this hour. It is a breaking story. We're just getting in information, and we will bring you all the latest as the details continue to unfold. Customers bracing for gas prices to spike after a deadly pipeline explosion we first told you about yesterday. Alabama now under a state of emergency as crews repair the Colonial Pipeline. One worker was killed and five others were injured when an excavator hit the pipe. Plume of fire. Looks to be a gas line explosion. Scene is still having explosions at this time. Cannot access the scene location. Well, that pipeline supplies gasoline for millions of people on the East Coast. A separate leak back in September created massive shortages and price spikes throughout the Southeast. A disturbing warning for all parents, please check your children's Halloween candy. This comes after police found needles and nails inside candy from trick-or-treating. You can see a nail right there sticking out of a Snickers bar. A parent in Michigan says her daughter bit into a thumbtack while eating a piece of candy. That is just terrible. And then in New Jersey, another family finding a sewing needle inside a Tootsie Roll and a small pin inside a Kit Kat. You can't be too safe. Please check it out. Well, the U2 frontman Bono is adding another award to his trophy case, but it is not what you would expect. That rock icon just named Glamour Magazine's first ever Man of the Year. Bono honored for his decades of humanitarian work helping the world's poorest women. Well, this year's other honorees include the singer Gwen Stefani, Olympian Simone Biles, and the founders of Black Lives Matter. And those are your headlines. I'll see you back here in just a little bit. All right. Thanks. So and Brian would concur. Brian loves uh, Bono. Right. He does not return my calls, which I find strange. <laughs> I do really do. I'm going to have to talk to the edge for now on. Hey, are you ready? Uh, are you ready for some, uh, for some football? A lot of fans are saying we are not ready this year. And it turns, the, it turns out baseball ratings are soaring. Heading into the World Series Game 7 tonight, NFL ratings are down, and the uh, baseball ratings are up close to 40%. For football, many are blaming Colin Kaepernick. When he began, we started taking a knee during the national anthem. It's Street had President Obama pumping up the economy while stumping for Hillary Clinton. We turned job losses into 15 million new jobs. And last year, incomes went up faster than any time that they've been keeping records. Well, that sounds great, but our next guest is breaking down the numbers, and a Hillary Clinton presidency does not look good for the average American's wallet. And what happens when Donald Trump makes a campaign stop at a local Wawa? The reaction is trending this morning. Say it with me. It's fun to say. Wah, wah, wah. Hey, Brian. There's wah. enough here for science to live. And there's room enough here for religion to forgive and try to understand. Six days ago, President Obama has been out on the campaign trail trying to get people excited to vote for Hillary Clinton and hyping the economy that he has overseen for the last eight years. We turned job losses into 15 million new jobs. Poverty went down faster than any time since 1968. We've seen an America that went from too many people uninsured to now 20 million people with health care who didn't have it before. Okay, well, he's making things sound pretty good, right? Is it really as rosy as the president is painting it? And what's it going to mean for your wallet if she wins? Brian Brenberg is the chairman of business and finance at the King's College here in New York City. Well, Brian, you just heard the president. That sounds great. <laughs> is it accurate? He's telling one part of the story, but he's leaving, conveniently leaving out a few things. He's leaving out the growth in debt. He's leaving out the number of long-term unemployed, people stuck in part-time jobs. He's leaving out the number of people who've dropped out of the labor force. He's leaving out food stamp enrollment. There's another side of the story that he's not telling here. But he did mention health care, but 
But health care, I don't know if I would be touting I, that. I wouldn't be talking about that right now. The premium increases, the deductible increases, insurers dropping out of the market. That's the bad news story that's been added to the last seven years of a difficult economy that's really got people thinking about what do I want to see over the next four years. Yeah. When you look, at, I heard Mrs. Clinton say yesterday, my plans don't add a penny to the deficit. Here's some of the stuff on her wish list right now. $350 billion for tuition-free college. Sounds great. $275 billion for infrastructure. Sounds great. $300 billion for family leave. $60 billion for clean energy, although we've spent plenty on that, and that hasn't worked out so well. What do you think about that? Well, she says she's going to raise taxes by about $1.5 trillion on the wealthy to pay for that. But you know what? That doesn't even handle the, the deficits that she's already going to inherit. The debt's going to increase by over $9 trillion on her watch. So it's not good enough just to pay for your new spending. You have to pay for the fact that we have all this built-in spending from things like Obamacare that are going to send the debt way up over the next 10 years. And ultimately, don't you think she's going to have to wind up raising taxes and it's going to wind up you, you really, everybody? You can't balance that budget on the backs of the rich. They're simply not going to pay yeah. for it. They're going to find other ways to invest their money. Uh, yeah, so I think the likelihood is the middle class is going to pay for this one way or the other. Sure, and we heard Ed, earlier in the program, we ran a soundbite where she said, if you know somebody who's uh, going to vote for Donald Trump, you need to stage an intervention. And then she went through the litany of how he used the tax rules to his advantage. Those are the rules. Yeah, you know, it, when you're going to go after somebody for playing by the rules, I don't think you've got a winning argument there. They should be talking about the policy issues. Who's going to grow this economy over the next four years? I don't think more government spending, I don't think higher taxes is a route to do that. All right. Professor, thank you very much for joining Always us. Always good to see you. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, coming up, stunning new developments after email show 10 hack attacks on Hillary Clinton's illegal server in just two days. 10 in two. Lieutenant General Michael Flynn is furious. He joins us in 10 minutes. Then Governor Scott Walker facing a firestorm of controversy for this tweet. Carly Schimke is here with why people think Walker just endorsed Hillary. But did he? I love that guy that flips. <laughs> The internet goes wild when a tweet from one of Hillary Clinton's strongest critics is interpreted as an endorsement for Hillary Clinton. Yep, here with a breakdown of what's trending this morning. Fox News headlines 24 7. Uh, key reporter, Ooh. XM 115 is where you find her. But like right that. now, she's with us. I Carly like Chimkus, welcome back. <laughs> Carly. We we got to find out what's happening in Wisconsin. Uh, what's going on? Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker's anti-Clinton tweet backfired in a big way. So okay. he tried to make a case for voters to vote for Donald Trump. He tweeted, if you like the past eight years, vote Hillary Clinton. Well, the problem is a lot of people thought he was endorsing Clinton in that tweet. Chris Jackson writes, uh, this is going to be your most popular tweet, but not in the way you hoped. Evan says, I didn't know who Scott Walker was. And as soon as I saw that tweet, I thought he was an HRC supporter. <laughs> and Kevin tweets, I'm Scott Walker, and I'm confused by this message. It, it is not a, a good one. It is a little confusing. Maybe there are people out there who liked the last eight years, and so they would think that that's and exactly a lot of people, meant. a lot of Democrats responded to that tweet and said, thank you for the tip. So right. I don't think that's what he was and looking for. And apparently we are not the only ones that like the Wawa, Wawa. the food at Wawa, Donald Trump, coffee. his Can daughter, you, Tiffany. Yeah, picture this. You're, sit, you're standing in a Wawa doing some of your normal shopping, crossing off the <coughs> shopping list, when in walks in Donald Trump, uh, his daughter Tiffany, and legendary Indiana basketball coach Bobby Knight. <laughs> Amazing. He, apparently, he didn't buy anything, but he stopped to take some pictures. Those pictures are going viral online. Other members of his entourage, though, reportedly picked up some tasty cakes. Wait a minute. You're saying they went in, they didn't buy anything. They just went uh, window shopping at well, Wawa? Donald Trump didn't buy anything. Oh. Personally, you know you always look for what the right. candidate's going to buy. All right. And you, oh, go ahead. I was going to say from Wawa back to Wisconsin. Wawa to Wisconsin. Tim Kaine, with one comment, could have lost the election he made, in that state for his woman. He made a crucial error. He asked a reporter... What's a cheese curd? Oh. That's like asking a reporter in Pennsylvania, what's a cheese steak? Right. You gotta know your food on the campaign trail. So uh, Tim Kaine responded to the reporter who tweeted about it saying, We didn't have cheese curds growing up in Kansas City, but man, have I been missing out. Oh, nice to be there. trying to redeem yeah. himself. Now, this, this story does have a happy ending, though, because okay. he was spotted at a restaurant later that day. 
eating cheese curd of course he with was. radish, with a uh, horseradish, well, which I've never had a cheese curd with a horseradish before. You can get it at Wawa. I guess so. <laughs> Well, uh, so so this is a, so. What's the theory then? The theory is no. What's indigenous to the people of that state? Yeah, remember that when? Would be smart. Yes. Sure. Remember when John Kerry was down in Philly and he went to either Gino's or Pat's and he ordered a cheesesteak and he asked for a Swiss cheese. Oh, on it. and he called it a sub, I think, not a hoagie. Oh, he did. Oh, man, it was just. There should it be was a, a There should be somebody uh, in your campaign completely dedicated to teaching you the food of that area because Why it not? always becomes a big viral topic if you get it wrong. All right. When in New York, do not eat the pizza with, with a fork. fork. Exactly right. Exactly. All right, Carly. Thank you very and much. And know yeah. what pizza is. Yes. You're coming to New York. Exactly. And how to pronounce. <laughs> hey, uh, guess who's coming up next? He, you see them all the time introducing Donald Trump at his live events. Now he's going to be with us in studio. How do I know? I recognize the hall. He is Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, and he is here live. It's Wednesday, it's November 2nd, 2016. I'm Ainsley Earhart. We start with a Fox News alert. Two police officers ambushed overnight, shot dead while they were just sitting in their patrol cars in two different locations. A manhunt is now underway for a killer. The breaking details in just moments. Meanwhile, six days until the election, and the ghosts of Bill Clinton's past just came back to haunt him and haunt Hillary as well in a brand new October surprise. This one on the first day of November. Not from WikiLeaks, but this one from the FBI. Plus, Donald Trump has a new message for America. It is not too late to change your mind and your vote. This is a good time to make an important public service announcement. You can change your vote to Donald Trump will make America great again, okay? All right, we're alive in, uh, on the campaign trail to talk more about that because your mornings are better because you chose to watch with friends. Fox News alert this morning. A cold-blooded cop killer on the run at this hour after shooting two police officers in Iowa, sparking fears that more officers will be murdered. Both officers were just sitting helplessly in their patrol cars in two separate locations. Yep, the shooting just happened 20 minutes apart near a high school just outside Des Moines. One of the patrol cars was riddled with bullets. I actually used to live three blocks away from where one of those police officers were shot. Now, their fellow officers, while visibly shaken, vowing to find the dangerous killer who is still, at this hour, on the run. In all appearances, it looks just like that, that these officers were ambushed. It, um, on the surface right now, just like I said, we're just a few hours into this, it doesn't look like there was any interaction between these officers and, and whoever the coward is that shot them while they sat in their cars. Um, that's the best we got that we can explain the scene right now. There's definitely some danger out there. There's somebody out there shooting police officers. We hope we find him before anybody else gets hurt. We all the schools in that area, they're shut down today. Breaking details are coming in by the minute, so stay with us for the latest on this horrific story. Let's bring in Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. You know, he's a big supporter of Donald Trump, been on the trail with him a lot. The one thing, uh, General, that we always notice about Donald Trump, especially over the last two weeks, he reacts is to the news. Yeah. And the news now is law and order. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is unbelievable tragedy. So you got these, you know, two great police officers that as the, I guess the chief that just said they were looks like they were targeted they were ambushed I mean the assault on our law enforcement professionals in this country is out of control and I, I would love to see the leadership in our mm -hmm. country today come out and say look this has got to end whoever did this particular shooting of these two great police officers and, and I'll, I'll tell you as we have gone around the country and, and in the you know in this experience that I'm uh, you know having with Donald Trump uh, the law enforcement community is is you know reaching out in such a big way to him because of the you know the compassion and frankly the the support that he has shown to them to be able to say the kinds of things that we need to say so this is this is just another tragedy another example of the lack of safety that we have on our streets in our country for these police officers my god you know 
how did the anti-cop narrative get so loud? Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, it gets loud when leadership doesn't step in. Okay, the, the anti-police narrative, the anti-law enforcement narrative, the anti-rule of law narrative gets louder when leadership does not step in. And the leadership at our at the local level, particularly by our chiefs of police, have been, has been superb. It's the leadership from the White House. And you have to, you have to step in immediately when you see this Is assault. it a political thing? It, it, well, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's a political thing. But what I know is that when we have police officers being ambushed and killed in the streets of our, of our cities and our, you know, in this country, it has got to stop. Yeah. yeah, we need to right. say we a need prayer to, for each we of those do. families. We do. And the cops that, that work in yeah. that area, because this gunman's still on the loose. Right, right. right. I, by the way, Sorry. I would love for the participating in say, I'd love for the president to say something. Yeah, I would too. I, I, I mean, I would, come on. I, I would love for him to say that. Listen, it doesn't matter what color you are. You law, if a, right. an attack on law and order is an attack on our society. Right. But let's just pivot to something uh, about this election. With six days left, a couple of things happen. The FBI comes out and makes the announcement about the discovery of 650,000 uh, emails. And then yesterday, um, responding to a Freedom of Information Act, they went back to 2001 and, get, and get, put forward documents about the Mark Rich pardon that, that Bill Clinton yeah. uh, okayed. How important is that? Uh, it's to all. Outline? I mean, this just shows the, the the continuation of the incredible dark cloud of scandals that that uh, it, you know sits over the Clinton machine. I mean, this is this. I, I describe this as the largest organized crime investigation, probably in decades, that the FBI is having to go through. You're talking about. You know, the Anthony Weiner pedophilia scandal, you're talking about a national, the reopening of a national security uh, investigation against Hillary Clinton, who is, you know, four or five days now away from potentially being a president. Give me a break. I mean, when is enough going to be enough for these people, in addition to the WikiLeaks, in addition to more stuff that's going to come out? I understand that, you know, there's, there's talk about the, the quote unquote 33,000 emails coming out today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, the 33,000 are probably in the 650,000. I mean, this, right. this, is un, this is unprecedented. It's unbelievable. You know you what? Mean, you mentioned the emails. Yeah. And we were, we were just learning this morning, Judicial Watch recently discovered that Hillary Clinton's server was the target of 10 hack yeah. attempts in a two-day period. This was back in 2010. And the hackers were trying to log on as different people within her campaign, like Doug Band and <coughs> Avenue. Right. What's your reaction? Right. Well, you know, all this stuff. And, and, the, and then the... The things that we are seeing in the email discussions that are coming out, I mean, even those, they're, 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 it's disgusting. This is a disgusting way to run. I mean, I, I would never allow this in any military organization at all. Any, any type of, uh, of the, the, the kind of conversations that are being had in these emails are just, it's unbelievable. I, I would tell you that the, um, the, the, the whole effort that's going on with when they talk about the cyber attacks and the hacking, I mean, this has been going on for many, many years. So for any of these people to be talking about what, what has happened or wouldn't happen, I mean, to me, this is just unbelievable. So, so I mean, what we're facing is we're facing a, uh, an incredible level of scandal, criminal behavior. I mean, there's, there's serious criminal behavior mm -hmm. that, that is directly related to Hillary Clinton's and actions. foundation? In the foundation. I mean, everything. You, you, know, and what? It's, you know, it's funny, but it's all coming together. This 650,000? It's, it's like Anthony Weiner is going to end up, you know, tying all this together because he probably was using this as a get-out-of-jail-free card. Well, you, apparently he is cooperating. We right. don't know exactly what cooperating, what the cooperation means. Yeah. But there's a story out this morning that, you know, given the fact that he was sexting, he's in big trouble right. for sexting right. with at least one yeah, underage sick. teenager. Uh, now there's a report that he could have been the perfect target for hacking into her server sure. because his then wife sure. was one of the uh, users. Yeah, I mean, there's two other things here that I think, in, uh, in my my experience with investigations, which we've had quite, a, I've had quite a bit actually in the area of espionage and also just the extortion side. So you have elements here that are so dangerous for our national security because you likely have classified information, highly classified information in this 650,000. So if Anthony Weiner had access to them, that means there are many, many other people that had access to them. Just the United the blackmail, States right. uh, evidently oh, had an, the extortion. The, the president of the United States evidently had an alias too, and he was going back and forth yeah. with Hillary Clinton on a private server. But, General, are you when you talk about uh, 
espionage and stuff that you've been involved in, it does bother me that we're doing this off Julian Assange's hack because this guy's an international criminal. Yeah. Does it bother you? Yeah, it bothers me. But uh, but uh, it also what what bothers me more. It's not about Julian Assange. It's not about Russia. It's not about Anthony Weiner. It's about Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is the one that made the decision to have an unclassified server in some closet somewhere right. to, to do government, very, very sensitive government business for four years. And that's why Barack Obama should be the angriest. I yeah, hired you to do be. a job, and you be. did all this. Now, here's the other thing. He should be, but, he's, but in a way, Brian, he's caught. He's caught because the, the, the leaks of information that are, that, that are coming out are going to show, unless they, unless they pull him for national security reasons, they're going to show that, that our president was in communication with Hillary Clinton. And, and in fact, he, he said he wasn't. He right. said he found out about it through the media. So sure, and and with the WikiLeaks stuff, this is this is where we are in society with technology now. Yeah. This is like a, yeah. a w the whistleblower of 2016. Right. Yeah. That's right. General, the other thing is that what so makes this so unique. I was thinking about it this morning. Is that if you didn't like Al Gore, you didn't vote for Al Gore. You don't like Bush, you don't like Bush. You didn't like Barack Obama, you didn't vote for Barack Obama. You wanted to find out more information, but it was just let's just find out more information to find out what kind of agenda he'll have. Right. This is different. Yeah, this this is, is what are you hiding? How deep does this go? Yeah. How else are you involved? What do you really mean? How are you rigging the primaries in order to get the nomination? The more you look, the uglier it gets. Like it or not, Donald Trump is so transparent. He got himself in a lot of trouble between his tweets and what he oh, says yeah. and answering questions maybe too candidly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a little too honest, you mean? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, journalism is under attack this, this election for sure because there's been so much... Frankly, there's just been deceit in the, in the in, you know, in your business. And I'm being very, very frank. This is, this has become a social media election. And I'm telling you, sure. you look at, so you guys pay attention to it. You, you report on it all the time. This is a digital election and it has changed. And all this leak stuff, it, if it's showing one thing is that you cannot hide anything. Yeah. And so it's like I've said, I've said it publicly, hack my emails because I would love to sure. have somebody put out what I say. Because what I'm saying right here is what I say in my emails. I don't disparage people. Like, you know, you know, all yeah. the kinds of words that were here and said in the emails. General, there's a brand new ABC Washington Post tracking poll that has just come out in yeah. the last uh, 10 minutes or so. And apparently, uh, on the question of honesty and trustworthiness, yeah. now Donald Trump eclipses Hillary Clinton. He's in front of her at this point, according to what was just whispered, whispered in my ear. Yeah. I got to ask you something uh, that uh, Mr. Trump was talking about out on the trail yesterday. Yeah. He said, look, you know, some of you may have already early voted for Hillary Clinton. It's not too late right. to change your vote. Right. How many people, as you go out, have you met or heard say, you know, I wish I, I, wish I could have a do-over on that? Yeah, well, the other, I mean, the other day... Is this a big number we're talking I, about? I don't know if it's a big number, but I think that people ought to have a, a you know... A, you know, I'm glad that those states have the opportunity to show up to the polls, because I guess if you show up to the polls on polling day, right. if you've previously voted, you can re-vote. You can recast your vote, and I guess there's five states. I think that that's a big deal. I, yeah, I don't know what the numbers are going to be, but I think it's going to be very interesting to see what those numbers are, well, to see you, how many people re-voted. If you look at the trends on, yeah. on Google, it is interesting. Interesting because yeah. no one's really checking it until right. the latest investigation drops on the right. 31st. All then sudden, all of a sudden, a spike goes up. People googling, yeah. how do you change your vote? Right, right, right. So, so I, I think right. you're going to see a number of people, re, you know, recast their vote. And I think you're going to see it. You can't yeah. explain it. Uh, you lived it, and you're getting briefed along with Donald Trump in many cases. Yeah. But it's hard to take your eye off what's happening in the world. Yeah. ISIS calling for attacks on the West Coast. Mosul about to fall. We're turning this over to Iran. The challenges which happening in Syria. Russia on the march. China beginning to expand. When Donald Trump looks at this, do you sense, does he know what he's getting into? <laughs> yeah, he does. And, and it's, uh, you know, this is an incredibly serious time for the United States of America. And it's a very, very important time for the U.S. to demonstrate leadership. We have such a deficit of leadership right here at home and around the world, and that has got to change. And Donald Trump, you know, that's his, his big message is make America great again, and his bigger message is we are going to start leading again. Yeah, well, a week from today, next Wednesday morning, we'll know who the yep. next president is. That's great. General, right, thank you General. very much. Thanks Where are you heading now? Back out the door. Uh, no, uh, you go back on the road yeah, with Back on the right. road, yeah. Wow. Meanwhile, I know we're going. We're going straight to Election Day. Remember, six days from now, Fox News has Election Day covered all day. Fox and Friends is going to start at 4 a.m. And Fox News will have continuous live coverage through the nights as the votes come in. We know you want to know how every state comes in, so stay 
here on Fox, your official American election headquarters. Thanks so much, General. Meanwhile, coming up straight ahead, six days until Election Day, and Donald Trump has a new message for America. It is not too late to change your mind. This is a good time to make an important public service announcement. You can change your vote to Donald Trump will make America great again, okay? So we are live on the campaign trail with Donald Trump. That'll be next. Hey, hey, hey. Have you ever danced in the rain or thank the sun? He knows. He joins us from Pennsylvania. So, Governor, you guys caught a break with this Hillary Clinton email stuff. Do you think it's enough to hand you the election a week from tonight? Well, you know, long before that announcement last Friday, Bill, I mean, frankly, polls around the country were showing tremendous momentum in this campaign. And frankly, I saw it as I was traveling across the country campaigning for Donald Trump and with Donald Trump. The crowds the enthusiasm. This, this is really a movement of but, the American what about people the, that, that what want to about make America great again. The so-called October surprise. I mean, nobody expected FBI Director Comey to come out Friday and say, hey, we have to reopen this because Uma Abedin's computer may cont contain national security stuff that shouldn't be on there. So, I mean, that's what I'm trying to get into perspective here, whether that's enough right. to put you guys over the top. In your opinion, is it? Well, I think that's in the hands of the American people, but uh, the, the simple fact is that millions of Americans, Bill, were very troubled this summer when the FBI concluded that Hillary Clinton had been, in their words, extremely careless with classified information on a private server when she was Secretary of State, and yet they didn't recommend to continue the investigation or charges. Uh, we, we think it was right, uh, and we commend the director of the FBI for, for keeping his word to the Congress and the American people. Okay. They found new, pertinent information. They're initiating an investigation, but what we already knew about Hillary Clinton's years as Secretary of State, where she had a private foundation that took foreign contributions and has come out in this avalanche of emails, I, I truly do believe uh, convinces millions of Americans that Hillary Clinton should never be elected President of the United States. Do you, th at, do you at the think end of the day, I want to tell you, there was tremendous momentum in this campaign all right, all right, even before this latest announcement. Because and we're seeing it across Pennsylvania and everywhere we go. Well, you're down by 11 in Pennsylvania, according to the Franklin Marshall poll. But we'll get to that in a moment. But I still want to stay on Hillary Clinton here. Do you think that she is a corrupt person? Well, I, I don't think there's any question that over the last 30 years, the the Clintons' careers have been characterized by no, but her, the, Hillary Clinton. the politics is she, is she of personal encroachment. Is she corrupt? I think that, well, I think there's been outright corruption represented throughout their careers, Bill. Good heavens, so you, you had so Bob Woodward, yes. who famously of... you saying well, of yes, you saying think yes, she's but, a corrupt person. Well, it, Bob Woodward of Woodward and Bernstein said on, uh, on this network about a week ago that, that having a private foundation taking foreign contributions from foreign governments while she was Secretary of State. He said, that's not unseemly. He said, quote, it's corrupt. But I that's Bob Woodward saying it's corrupt. I, I want to know what Mike yeah. Pence says. Is Hillary well, I, Clinton I, corrupt? I, I think her actions as Secretary of State, the pay-to-play politics, where you saw, her, you saw Hillary Clinton and aides to Hillary Clinton actually directing contracts for the reconstruction of Haiti to friends of the Clintons who were contributors to their campaigns and their private foundation, that's just, that's the kind of pay-to-play corruption the American people are right. tired of in Washington, well, D.C. It's going to come to an end the day that Donald Trump becomes president. I think Americans want to know you if you think she's corrupt. And you've said now that you do. Is Loretta Lynch, the Attorney General of the United States, corrupt? She does not want to investigate the Clinton Foundation. You just pointed to it. She does not want, according to reportage by the Wall Street Journal, to investigate it at all. Is Loretta Lynch corrupt? Well, I, I, I don't think we really know. I know that the meeting between former President Clinton and the Attorney General on the tarmac on a, on a private aircraft that, was, that would have been a clandestine meeting, but for some industrious local television reporter who saw that it happened this summer was, was deeply troubling to millions of Americans. But, but you I, haven't I decided need, whether I, you think she's corrupt or not? No, I, I, don't think we, I, don't think we, I don't think we have the facts. And at, at the end of the day... It's not look, enough that she doesn't the, want to investigate the, the Clinton of, Foundation? It's not well, enough? Well, well Bill, I, look, I don't, I don't want to presume on what her opinions are on that or not. I've All seen right. press reports and suggestions, but 
At the end of the day, Hillary Clinton's on the ballot, Donald Trump's on the ballot. The American people in Donald Trump have a choice in a candidate who's got an ethics reform proposal. We're going to move in the first hundred days that's going to drain the swamp. We're going to have government as good as our people. We're going to pass fundamental ethics reform in our nation's capital and change the direction of, uh, of Washington, D.C. Okay. You're down by 11, as I mentioned, in this Franklin Marshall poll in Pennsylvania. You need Pennsylvania or Wisconsin, one of those two, to pick off to win the electoral vote. We just analyzed it earlier on the factor. Um, 11, that's a big number being down in Pennsylvania right now. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, the only poll that matters uh, is the one that's going to be finished on Election Day. And, and uh, people are going to go to vote here in Pennsylvania on November the 8th. And I, I just have to tell you, campaigning with Donald Trump here in the Keystone State, he's in Wisconsin tonight. I, I did, Bill, really and truly, the, the enthusiasm that we see from not just Republicans, but independents and many Democrats around the country is like, like nothing I've seen in my lifetime yeah. since the days of Ronald Reagan. The American Listen. people know we can be stronger, we can be more prosperous, but we've got to have new leadership, and that There's happens today no Donald question. Trump becomes president. There's no question the enthusiasm level from the folks attending the rally.